Hello guys, welcome to the session. So as we know, we are discussing problems on atomic structure. This is the second session of uh, problem solving atomic structure. Okay. So we were solving some questions that has been asked in previous exam. It helps you in both KPY or J or NEET exams. So those past year problems we are solving actually. Okay. So let us start with the session. Okay, let us discuss this question. Okay. The electrons identified by the quantum number n and l these values are given and can be placed in the order of increasing energy from lowest to highest okay easy one you can easily compare the n plus l rule compare with n plus l rule which we also call it as off bow rule right n plus l rule According to this rule, what we say that the value of n plus l, the energy is directly proportional to n plus l value, right? If, if n plus l values are equal, values are equal then we compare we compare n value okay more value of n more will be the energy so let us discuss this the first one the first one n plus l value for the first one is 5 for the second one n plus l value is 4 third one n plus l value is 5 again fourth one n plus l value is 4 okay so obviously second and fourth has lesser energy than first and third okay so first and third if you compare the n value third has the minimum n value than uh, lesser n value than one so the third one has maximum energy sorry third one has minimum energy then we have first one and then if you compare Oh, it is other way right the energy of one and third is more than to that of second and fourth one and third the energy of first is more so first one has maximum then we have third second and fourth n value if you compare n value is lesser for the fourth one so we have second here and then in the last we have So this is the decreasing order of energy. So let's check the option. First has maximum, then third, then second, and then fourth option A is correct here. Okay, now question number 27. The number of nodal planes for XY. PXY 
has only one nodal plane that is y z plane okay has only one nodal plane that is y z plane hence the answer for this one is option 1 that is only one right perpendicular to the plane of x axis that is y z plane okay answer is option okay the next one you see the wavelength associated with the wavelength associated with a golf ball weighing this much gram moving at the speed of this 5 meter per hour is of the order okay so how do we do this we know wavelength lambda associated with any moving object of mass m is h divided by mv okay so h is the planck constant the value is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by m is 200 g the mass that we have we don't have to change this 200 g sorry it is in g so we have to convert this into kg the si unit because it is in joule per it is in joule right 10 to the power minus 3 kg into velocity is 5 meter we have to convert this r into second so divided by Thirty six hundred. Okay, just you need to solve this. You'll get the answer. So this is you have to find out in order. So we can do this. Okay, suppose we have six point six into thirty six hundred into ten to the power minus thirty four divided by. Thousand into ten to the power minus three. Okay. So if you solve this, this will cancel out. And this would be. so we have thousand into the minus three so we have this one so it's a calculation mistake so five into two hundred is one thousand one thousand into ten to the power minus three that's right One thousand into ten to the power minus three. Okay, so we need to solve this. So we get it here. This will cancel out, and we get sixty-six into three six zero into ten to the power minus thirty. Okay, so if you multiply this, what we get? Just I'll do this just a second. So we have sixty six into three six zero two three seven six. So we are getting it as two three seven six zero into ten to the power minus thirty. Okay, so fine. So we'll write down point here. Four zero will come down ten to the power minus thirty. So answer would be ten to the power minus thirty. Option C. in this order we get it okay now the next question is 
quantum numbers plus half and minus half of the electron spin represent the rotation of electron in clockwise and anti clockwise direction respectively rotation of electron in anti clockwise and clockwise direction respectively magnetic moment of the electron the electron pointing up and down respectively two quantum mechanical spin state which have no classical analog okay two quantum mechanical spin state which has no classical analog Okay, so plus half and minus half. We usually say that it is the orientation of electron, right, about its own axis. If it is said to be clockwise orientation, it is plus half. If it is said to be minus half, then it is anti-clockwise orientation. But actually, actually, it represents the magnetic moment, right? So it is a component of. component of spin angular momentum right spin angular momentum and if it is plus half right then we say the component of this spin angular momentum is along the along in the direction of magnetic field right in the direction of magnetic field and minus half it is opposite to the direction of magnetic field, right so plus half and minus half it represents the magnetic moment of electron pointing up and down respectively right so usually for easier way we say it as when the electron enters into the orbital it can have clockwise or anti clockwise orientation and that is plus half and minus half right but this actually represents plus half and minus half this actually represents the spin magnetic moment or simply we can say the magnetic moment when it is along the magnetic field and opposite to the magnetic field right so when it is along the direction of the magnetic field right then it is plus half and when it is anti clockwise it is minus half so answer for this question is option c magnetic moment of electron pointing up and down respectively okay now the next question you see if nitrogen atom has electronic configuration 1s7 it would have energy lower than that of normal ground state that is 1s2 2s2 2p3 because the electrons would be closer to the nucleus yet 1s7 is not observed because it violates heisenberg uncertainty principle munsch rule munsch rule pauli exclusion principle and bohr's postulate of stationary orbits okay so you see heisenberg has nothing to do with the electronic configuration it deals with the uncertainty in the position of electrons correct hansul it says the electrons occupy in the orbital occupies the orbital one by one right and then the pairing takes place right so pairing is not possible unless all the orbitals belongs to the same subshell is singly occupied that's unsure pauli exclusion principle is no two electron could have the same set of quantum numbers right but one s if it has more than two electrons then obviously two electron is this is a hypothetical case two electron is this if you have suppose third one third one will have either clockwise 
or anti clockwise orientation this is the possibility we have so it means the two electron in the same shell has the same uh, set of quantum numbers and hence it is not possible that's why this particular you know question it violates the pauli exclusion principle right okay 33rd the radius of which radius of which of the following orbit it's same as that of first bohr's orbit of hydrogen atom okay radius of which of the following orbit is same easy one okay so what is the first bohr orbit of hydrogen atom we know the formula of radius the radius formula is in nth orbit r n is equals to 0.529 n square by z hydrogen is in first bohr orbit means 529 into 1 square by 1 only right same as the first bohr orbit fine so if you talk about helium so r h e plus is 0.529 into 2 square by 2 helium the atomic number is 2 obviously it is not equal so we need to just compare the n square by z value for all this okay if it is equal with if it is equal to 1 you see the value of this for hydrogen for hydrogen is 1 so for for which of these ions it is 1 okay lithium lithium n square is 2 square by 3 not equal li2 plus for 3 1 so it is 3 square by 3 not possible beryllium 3 plus right so it is 2 square by 4 the atomic number of beryllium right hence this value is 1 answer is option d for this one easy one just you need to compare the n square by z Value. If it is coming out to be equal for hydrogen, that is one. It is the same orbit as the first orbit of hydrogen has. Okay, fine. The next one. okay the number of radial nodes of 3s and 2p orbitals are respectively easy see radial node is equals to n minus l minus 1 so for 3s it is 3 minus 0 minus 1 equals to 2 for 2p It is three two minus one minus one, and that is zero. Two and zero. The answer is option A. The kinetic energy of an electron in the second Bohr orbit of a hydrogen atom. Okay, so kinetic energy is what? Kinetic energy is is half m v square. Of m v square, and the value of v is in terms of h. We need to find out. Okay, so if you do not memorize this, you can easily derive this. Right? How do we do this? We know the angular momentum m v r is the integral multiple of h by two pi. We need to find out m v square, half m v square. right so what is v from this it is n h by 2 pi into 1 by m r right this v will substitute here so it becomes half m v square is n square by h square by 4 pi square m square r square okay so this square and m will get cancel and we'll get here n square h square by 8 π 
pi square m r square. Okay. Kinetic energy of an electron a naught is the Bohr radius. So a naught is equals to what we know the Bohr radius is for one. One is square by one. This is a naught. So r is square. So how do we write down r in terms of a? A naught is this. So what we can write r radius r is equals to we can write down a naught into any orbit n squared by z is one. So r we can substitute as a naught square n square here. Right. So we'll substitute r here. It becomes n square h square divided by eight pi square m. R square is a naught square n to the power four, so this square and this four will get cancelled. We we'll get n to the power two. Okay, so this. So this when you solve you'll get h square by 8 pi square m a naught square n square h square 8 pi square m Oh, is there any mistake? R is a naught n square. No, so R square is n square. H four pi square. Okay, just cross check this. Okay, fine. So second Bohr orbit is given. That's what I was thinking. Second Bohr orbit is given. So we'll put here four, so four square into this. Second words, so two square into four. So we'll get h square by two square four into eight is thirty-two. Pi square m a naught square. Right. Answer is option C. Okay. This is it. The energy of an electron in the first Bohr orbit of hydrogen atom is this. So it is given in the first board orbit. So E1 is given. It is minus 13.6 electron volt. The possible energy values for the excited state of electrons in Bohr's orbit of the hydrogen. Right? So energy we know it is E is equals to minus 13.6. Z squared by n squared. Right, Z squared by n squared. So, This is the formula we have in electron volt. Now, it is for hydrogen atom, right? So Z we don't have to think about because it is one only. N can N can be one, two, three, anything, right? So if it is two, if N is two, 
we have to check this one by one. If n is 2, then energy for the second orbit is minus 13.6 divided by 4. So we are getting here 2 or 3.4 minus 3.4 electron volt. Okay, so this is possible. If n is equals to 3, then E3 is equals to minus 13.6 by 9, that is 1.5. Nine four six one point five electron minus one point five electron. What do you see? D is also correct. Okay, so minus three point four, then minus one point five. Then it means minus point four in between these two. It is not possible, right? If you talk about n is equals to four, then E four is equals to. We are getting zero point something minus zero point something, right? Because thirteen point six by 16 would be 0 point something which is not the case here so option would be a and d both possible into this one okay it's a multiple correct question so answer is a and d for this one which of the following statements is our correct this is also multiple correct question the electronic configuration of chromium is 4s1 3d5 this one is correct the magnetic quantum number may have a negative value yes that is also possible minus l2 plus l it is there Silver atom 23 electrons have a spin of one type and 24th of opposite type. The atomic number of Ag is 47. Okay, so if silver atom, so silver is Ag, so it is um, 1s2. Okay. Twenty three electrons have a spin of one type. Okay, it means one type we have. So one, two, three. So twenty three will have an opposite sign. Okay. If you see the electronic configuration of copper, so copper, zinc we have, and here we have Ag. If you look at the position of it, right? So copper is copper electronic configuration is four s one three d ten. Hence, silver would be, it is 5s1 and 4d10. 5s1 and 4d10. It means if 4d is filled, means 4p, 4s is also filled completely, right? And 3d, 3p, 3s also filled completely. So the configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s, 4p6, 4d, 5s1, and 4d10. Okay, so this is the electronic configuration. So it is 6 plus 4, 10 plus 10, 20 plus 10, 30, 40, 47. This one is also correct. Okay, 47. We are getting. Okay, all these you see. 20 plus 10, 30, right? So out of 30, five electrons will have the same configuration, right? And here we have 10, 10 plus five, one, two, three plus two, five plus one, six, six plus three, nine, nine plus one, 10, 10 plus five, 15, 15 plus three, 18, 18 plus five, 23. 23 electron will have the same configuration and same uh, spin, hence this is the answer. Oxidation is state of nitrogen. Nitrogen is uh, minus one and it is minus one by three and plus one, right? 
minus 1 by 3 oxidation state of nitrogen we have. So I think option D is uh, not correct. Oxy, this is plus 1. Plus 1 and nitrogen should be minus 1 by 3 so that overall it is linked. So answer is A, B and C for this question. Okay, next question you see. Decrease in atomic number is observed during what? Okay, so this one is, you know, it's an information based question. You should know the relation here. What happens in alpha emission? What happens in beta emission, etc. Suppose you have an atom. I'm taking X, A, mass number and atomic number if it goes under alpha emission right minus alpha means alpha emission alpha means what helium particle so helium particles comes out so we have he 4 and 2 hence the left here is a minus 4 and z minus 2 decrease in atomic number right you see the atomic number is decreased. It was Z initially, now it becomes Z minus 2. If this goes under, if this goes under beta emission, when beta emission is electrons comes out from this, right? So we'll get here X, A, electrons comes out. So E, 0 and minus 1, the charge we have here, means it is Z plus 1 to balance the equation. So here we have increase in atomic number. So I think D is wrong. So far this one is correct. Let's talk about the other one that is positron emission. Right? In positron emission means one positron, one positive charge comes out. So plus one. So that would be simple one X A Z minus one. It means this is also correct. Right? And the last one we have, if we have electron capture, means it takes one electron plus E takes one electron so it becomes x a and it takes one electron so the charge decreases right c minus one right so d is also correct so a c d are the correct ones the ground state electronic configuration of nitrogen atom can be represented by means outermost electron is talking about it is understood in this question. So N has seven electron, one S2, two S2, two P, three. So one S has two electron, two S has two electron, and two P has three electron, which is this according to Hans rule. Right, hence the answer for this question, it could be, this is not possible because either it is clockwise or anti-clockwise, correct? So, Answer for this would be, this is also correct. And this is also correct. A and D, both are correct in this one. Right. So these are, these are the few questions we discussed. Okay, very basic questions. The next session we'll have, we'll get, take some good questions, you know, some higher level questions we'll see. But this kind of questions helps you in KVPY exam a lot. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah.